Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this? You may ask, so I tell you. The exception meaning of angel is messenger and the exception meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and in the calmness they bring. Now in a moment I will introduce you to my wonderful guest Nakula Das. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, guided meditation, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get refocused on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover the various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Nakula Das, who'll be sharing how the power of mantras can help you heal and create. Now, Nakula Das has helped thousands of people from around the world to transform their lives, business, and personal relationships. One of the main tools he uses are mantras. Now, though not a monk or traditional yogi, Nakula has spent time with New Age healers, Buddhist teachers, Christian pastors, and yogis, which allows him to be honest and vulnerable in his approach to teaching and spiritual life. Nakula re addresses real situations of real people like paying bills, going to work, sex life, drugs and alcohol, and the political landscape in which you find yourself living in this age of confusion and unnecessary quarrel. Add to this a background in life coaching, making, helping thousands of spiritual entrepreneurs, including myself. Nicole is someone you definitely want to spend time with and chat to. So without further delay, hello, Nicola, and welcome to today's show. How are you today? Great, great. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm popping so, my ego up. I love it. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into this fascinating conversation, then I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments, as both Nakula and I want to be part of this show. So please do not be shy. So Nakula, why don't you tell us about yourself and how the power of mantras can help us to heal and create? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So, um, I'm, I mean, a little bit about myself. Um, I, I think you did a great job uh, introducing me and tell a little bit about my, my background. Um, <clears throat> I spent many, uh, many, t uh, many years, many times, not, I don't want to say many years, I'm not that old, right? Many, many years of my life have been spent. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with different spiritual types of uh, practices and with many different types of people. I've always been fascinated with people and cultures, belief systems, ways of living. And if you look across the planet, there's so many different belief systems. There's so many different ways of living when it comes to religion, when it comes to politics, sex, uh, eating. I mean, everything down to how you fold your clothes is different in different parts of the world. Yeah. And I'm just fascinated by all of that, uh, that expression. Um, you know, spiritual beliefs and uh, religious beliefs and cultural beliefs are so deeply embedded in us that they affect every aspect of our of our lives. And while I spent all this time and just and I still do like this is just a passion. This is a pastime of mine. Like, oh, what, what are these people about? They do what? I want to try. I want to try. That's like my <laughs> my kind of my attitude. Right? I want to do it, too. Right. Um because I just want to, you know, live life and 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 have this experience, and and so I was. Uh, I one thing that I noticed that I've learned from all of these different practices and all of these different cultures is that they all use sound vibration as part of their spiritual religious processes across the board. It doesn't matter what it is. There is this constant element of sound vibration. And Albert Einstein said that this universe is made up of sound and light. And that's it, right? And it's like, yeah. it just comes down to this. It comes down to Nikola Tesla said that uh, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of frequency, vibration, and attraction. Yeah. So 
they they broke it down so simply and so while on top of all of these cultures and all of this type of landscape that's so diverse there are some principles that are universal and so for me uh my my love of life is to find these principles and then apply them in all these different areas <laughs> i say oh well it can go here it can go and that's how you know it's a principle because it's it's applicable it has a 360 degree it's got this timeless element to it there's a part of the the story there's a part of the elements there's a part of everything that's timeless and it is universal and so i want to like point these pull these out of all these cultures and belief systems whether it has to do with sex or religion or death my three favorite subjects sex god and death <laughs> Beat sex drums and rock and roll that's right yeah that's right yeah that's right and uh and uh i want to i want to discover the principles uh and, and i mean i i feel very confident that uh from what i've already discovered that the, the principles are the same across the board. But what I do find is that each culture deals with these three things a bit differently. Hmm. And, uh, and I uh, just want to explore that. And so that's, uh, you know, that's how I came to, to where I'm at today. Uh, I've been doing this all in the background. As you know, I was a business coach for close to a decade. I've helped thousands and thousands of spiritually based entrepreneurs grow okay, their right. businesses. Yes, they, yes, right. Grow their businesses, market themselves, learn about marketing, learn about selling themselves and, and bringing spiritual uh, spirituality as a, as a culture, as a global culture to, to more people. And something I still feel very passionately about. And at the same time, I always felt like I was in the background of the game. And I was like, I, I, I want to be in the front now. I want to, uh, I want to share some things beyond what I know about business. And so this led me down a couple of different roads. Uh, one was really practicing uh, sound vibration. And I decided that the Hare Krishnas was the particular order or path that I would follow. Um, the, 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 one of the reasons I picked it is because in the essence, a principle of, of the philosophy of the Vedic culture or the uh, the 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 um, the ancient what we know today as Hinduism and what we know today as India, right? The Vedic culture uh, had all these timeless principles, and uh, Krishna um, spoke the Bhagavad Gita, and the Bhagavad Gita is a famous book. If you don't know it, um, that is the main scripture in the in the Hindu yogic tradition, in the Vedic culture. It's the essence of the Vedas, and the Vedas means the books of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the Bhagavad Gita um, is the absolute essence and the knowledge, and it's spoken by Sri Krishna. And so that's why we're called Hare Krishnas, because we're followers of Krishna and the teachings or the way of the, the way that Krishna laid out the yogic path and system. And the yogic path and system isn't what it is today of like, uh, there's part of it, the asanas, the physical aspect, but it's a whole lifestyle and it's a whole system uh, of of how to develop a spiritual culture and life where everything's encompassed so the vedas means books of knowledge and it encompasses everything there's not an aspect of life that the vedas doesn't cover but the essence of the vedas is that we are the the knowledge that is the, the you know at the core is that we are spirit souls we are conscious we are part and parcel of God, and we have an eternal relationship with God. And in the human form of life, it is our purpose to awaken and reignite that relationship with God. And what's interesting is they present it in a way where they give all these diverse ways. They don't just say, uh, Krishna doesn't just say this is one way to do it. He actually lists the book is 700 verses. It's 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 a song, yeah. Right? And and he gives all these different ways. He talks about karma yoga, which is action without attachment. Uh, he talks about jnana yoga, development of knowledge. He talks about all these different processes um, of of yogas and different positions of life. So if you're in family life, here's how you do it. If you're a monk, here's how you do it. If you're so, so there, it's an all-inclusive, and and never is the word Hinduism ever used, and never is the word religion ever used. It's simply a principles of life. Here's how to live life in a way that 
is in alignment with a higher purpose. And that higher purpose is to know yourself, to become self-realized, and eventually, you know, what they call Krishna consciousness or God realized, which is non-different than Allah realized or Jehovah realized or Christ realized, yeah. right? Christ consciousness and Krishna consciousness is the same. It is, is, is understanding that I am a soul and that there is a super soul. I am part of that super soul, but I am not the whole thing. So therefore, by natural conclusion, my position is to become a servant to the whole. And so the recommended form in, so in the Vedas, it's really cool. Like there's a, a particular book called Srimad Bhagavatam. That's like the next level from for the Bhagavad Gita. And Srimad Bhagavatam talks about the different ages in which the earth cycles through. Okay. And so it talks about that there's this, golden age and then there's the silver age and there's a bronze age and there's a dark age and they happen at different times and it gives all these different like calculations and cosmology and one of the things it says is that this earth has gone through these cycles many 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 times and that these cycles are almost predictable because the energies of these cycles are cyclical. So the energy creates certain um, results, certain okay. manifestations, right? So in this particular age, according to the Vedic wisdom, is that we are in what's known as the Kali Yuga. The Kali Yuga is lasts 432,000 years. Okay. Okay. It is the dark age of the large cycle of what they call one day of Brahma, one one day of the universal intelligence or the Lord. So in, in, in the Hare Krishna order, Lord Brahma is represented as intelligence. Intelligence is what creates the universe or passionate energy, creative energy, sex energy creates. Yeah. And then out of there, there is a, a type of Vishnu, which represents a mode of goodness. So Lord Brahma is representing this mode of passion. Lord Vishnu is representing this mode of goodness. And then comes Lord Shiva, the destroyer, the mode of ignorance. And these three material energies make up this material universe. And out of the body of Vishnu or Krishna or God emanates innumerable Brahmas, meaning innumerable universes. There's just... There's just sweating out universes. <laughs> yeah. God is just a universe making machine. And so in this particular universe, right, we have uh, these, this, these ages and these ages are going on in all these universes and yeah. all these different dimensions. And we are little sparks of consciousness that get, take birth in this material universe. And we take birth in this material universe because this is a principle that shows up in all these religions is that the principle is that somehow or the other we fell from grace or we our consciousness became material we basically forgot our spiritual essence and who we are and became lost in what the hindus called maya the buddhists call mara and the christians call the devil Maya is the original Sanskrit word for, for, for all of those. The original Sanskrit word is Maya, and it means illusion. Okay. The illusory energy of God, this in, in the story of Buddha, Mara, it's, it's, it's his inner demons. And in the Christian story of Jesus, it is the outer, it is the outer uh, force. Basically, the principle is that it is the opposition force. So there is this dance between light and dark, negative and positive, spiritual and matter, spirit and matter. This is a principle that's found in all of them, but they're told in different ways. So according to uh, the Vedas, this particular age that we're living in, it, each age has different sacrifices different spiritual practices that are recommended based upon the energy and atmosphere that we're in in the particular in this particular age the kali yug it says that the only way to achieve god realization 
in this particular age is through sound vibration that God incarnates in sound. So in different ages, he incarnated, he incarnated personally. He incarnates, he sends his son, he sends his prophet, he sends his enlightened one. He's he himself come like there's so many different ways that God can be that that God has come and has shown his way to reach. But each time it's a little bit different because the people, the circumstances, the places, the language, the customs are different. But the point is that we all get to this place where we understand that I am a soul eternally. I am not this body or mind. This body and mind is simply a vehicle to have this experience. And according to the Vedic knowledge, the human form is specifically designed and meant for spiritual realization. So the purpose of being a human is to become spiritually realized, according to the Vedic wisdom, right? And um, and then the uh, and then and then um, with and then in that realization, you will naturally realize, well, I'm eternal, but I'm not controlling all this. Like a lot is going on here and I ain't the one doing it. So I must be interacting with a larger universal body. And I am eternal spirit. This universal larger body is eternal spirit. And my job is to get myself back up into a frequency where I can be in yoga connected with that, with that spiritual body. And that was the promise. The good news is that you are eternal life. That's the good news. That's what Jesus, that was the Jesus message. The good news is that you are eternal life. You do not have to suffer for the rest of your life in this material planet, in this material body and world. The good news in the Vedas is you are eternal life and there is a place beyond this material world called the spiritual world. In quantum physics, they're looking right now for the God particle, which is the, the, the Bhagavad Gita talked about the God particle. They just called it the soul. The, this, the material scientists, they can't find it right now because actually in Bhagavad Gita, but if they would look to the ancient Vedic, because the Vedas weren't like religion is today. The Vedas were done by scientists. These rishis and mystics, what we call mystics is now more like a term we use for like people like us, like healers and, and, and spiritual. But a mystic back then was the scientists. Can right? You like calling a scientist today a mystic. What's that? Can you imagine today calling a scientist a mystic? Oh, they'll freak. Yeah. But that's what they're doing. They're doing they're doing mysticism. Why? Because it's they're trying to find the mysteries mm. of the universe. Right? And that's and that's there's no difference between science and religion. No difference. It's just that one is more anchored in the in discovering the material universe. And one is more anchored in discovering the spiritual or the invisible reality. But both through the medium of quantum physics now are, are, are going, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. I get, I get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. That there is this realm of existence that that scientists even said it, it must exist, but we cannot, it is outside of our calculations. It is because it is infinite and we are finite. So therefore it lives outside of our understanding. And that's very difficult for the ego to grasp and accept, right? But you can connect with it through the power of sound. Sound is a frequency that can raise your frequency. So how do you raise your frequency? You have to go down this process of cleansing your energy, cleansing your consciousness. Essentially, in the Buddhist way to look at it, there's this process of unraveling your entanglements. And entanglements can mean all your false egoistic attachments. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's called false ego. What is false ego? And and in, in the Christian tradition, you can look at it as temp your temptations. Yeah. All right? It's the things that pull you away from... from a uh, from living a more pure life like a life where you you're simple you're you're developing spiritually as opposed to materially 
it doesn't, it's very practical. You take care of your material needs, you, you know, all this stuff, but you're not living in excess. You're living very natural life, healthy, family oriented. You care more about relationships than you do about your bank account or any other aspect of life. And you're specifically living to become spiritually realized. So your spiritual sadhana, your spiritual practice is the first and foremost. That is the culture that would actually change the planet. Yeah. Because then that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a cultural shift. So how does sound now affect us as a culture? Well, you become what you listen to. You become what you associate with. And the thing about listening is that you're always listening even when you're sleeping. Yeah. That's why like subliminal messages work, all of this work. Why does it work? Because you're always taking in information. You may not be conscious of it, but that information is going in, going in, going in. And so right now there is a, a, a war that's raging on this planet. Now, most people can see that by its manifestations in multitudes of ways. Yeah. But I'm going to suggest that it's a, it's at a higher level. There's a war and the war is for your attention. And what people, powerful people have discovered, and they discovered this thousands of years ago, that if you control the sound vibrations, you control the culture. What is the sound vibrations? Language. He who controls the language makes the rules and controls the world. I promise you. So what these great saints and mystics and spiritual scientists discovered way back then. So this is this whole power struggle and social unrest. This ain't new. They were dealing with that thousands. This is the this is time immemorial. This is except that this planet goes through this stuff. It's just part of the gig here. That's why it's not about changing the planet. It's about changing your heart and getting out. That's the whole idea, right? So the, the idea here is that you can, whatever you consistently expose yourself as a vibration to, you eventually become, you become like that. So for example, if, you're constantly listening to depressing music. You will have depressing thoughts. Yeah. Why? Because your so your body is 72% water. Scientifically proven that if you put frequency into water, right? This started in the 70s with Dr. Emoto's work, yeah. but now all the tools and gadgets have been, you know, and said, yes, when a frequency is injected into water the molecular structure of the water shifts so to the naked eye nothing happens but down under the microscope they can see depending on the frequency this hurt this hurt this hurt you can change the molecules so the frequency is actually shifting your body here's the good news you have a body you have a few different bodies actually if you have one this material body which is made of the material elements, mainly earth, wind, water, fire, and this ether. You also have a spiritual body, a light body, we can call it, an angelic body, right? And this angelic body is developed by constant awareness and purification from material desire. So sound vibration, by constantly chanting sounds, you are raising your free, your awareness to more subtle and subtle levels where then you become aware of your light body or your spiritual body. The more you're aware or conscious of your spiritual body, the less you are become aware of your material body. This is why practices like renunciation, celibacy, eating one grain of food of rice, fasting, all of this takes why is all of those rituals and all of those practices and all traditions practice? The idea is that you are you are weaned slowly. You are weaning yourself off of the material body. 
moving yourself to a spiritual body. And your spiritual body is described as such an ananda, eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge, full illumination. Knowledge is illumination, full illumination. You no longer need a material body. And in, when you attain this body, you attain eternal life. You don't return back to the material kingdoms unless, you know, somehow you want to, right? Yeah. You have free will and choice. Uh, or you can do like there's a great sage Narada Muni in the Vedas, and he's known as the traveling spaceman. He literally travels through the material and spiritual universes uh, because he has the body to do so. Uh, it's very it's like like say you want to uh, let's say you wanted to discover the experience of living in the ocean. You need the proper body to do that, right? You would need a, a whale body or a fish body or some aquatic life body, right? Water. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so the, the soul attains a body depending on its desire and karma. So, what these great sages and mystics discovered was sound vibration shifts your karma. Sound vibration shifts you at such a deep level that it actually begins to break your karma. The word mantra is a Sanskrit word that means mind and to release, or another another way to look at it is mind and technology or tool. The mind, so Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that the mind is either your best friend or worst enemy. Yeah. So the mind is not a bad thing, it's a tool. Used properly, it becomes your best friend and takes you to wherever you want to go. You can use your mind to create material abundance and material experiences. You can use your mind to uh, uh, create art and architecture and whatever. Or you can use your mind to develop your mm, Satchinananda, your, your light body, your spiritual body. Your mind is the vehicle in which the soul then follows or travels. So wherever your mind goes, you go. And that is literal. It's not just a nice, you know, Facebook meme. Right? Yeah. Well, that's a good one. That's right. It is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so mantra means to release the mind or to use the mind as a tool. So the rep the repetition of mantra, and I particularly chant the Hare Krishna mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra is, is known as the Maha mantra. The word Maha means great, like Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi. Atma actually means soul. The word is Jiva Atma, individual soul. Okay. Atma is soul. Maha is a Sanskrit word for great. So a Mahatma is a great soul. So Mahatma Gandhi, it was a, a way to say great soul Gandhi. So Maha, the Hare Krishna mantra is known as the Maha mantra. The great releaser of the mind. The Maha Mantra vibration is done with specific technique, with emotion, listening, on the beads, sitting up straight, is designed to purify your consciousness and your energies and become more and more aware of your spiritual reality, your spiritual body. In this process, you transform all aspects of your life because you are transforming. And when you transform, your life transforms. Your life will never exceed you. The universe makes no mistakes. Whatever it is that you're attracting is in perfect alignment with your vibration and energy as you are in this moment. So therefore, you want to raise your energy or frequency and shift yourself into a new dimension or new frequency. And this can, you can blow yourself to different planets, according to the, the great sages. You can blow yourself all across this universe, you become the traveling spaceman like Narada Muni, <laughs> right? And you can attain uh, what Jesus Christ called the kingdom of heaven. Or in the, in the Sanskrit, in the Vedic culture, they call it Vrindava, Vrindavan, the spiritual kingdom where God is, and he's there personally, where you can associate with God. And, and it's not void. It's not just like uh, like the voidist conception of... 
Okay, I think we just lost you. For, yeah. Oh, we, 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 lo we lost you for a second. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <You're back>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were off traveling, weren't you? I was, I was way out into the Brahma Jyoti. So yeah, I think the, 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 the voidest conception of the universe is also part of, of the philosophy. It's known as the Brahma Jyoti or the light, the all pervading light. But underneath the Brahma Jyoti, there's Paramatma. Paramatma means super soul. So in your heart, situated in your heart, like, like Jesus said, the kingdom of God, the access to the kingdom of God is in the heart. This is also true in the Vedas, right? In fact, the yogis would meditate on their heart. The Paramatma feature. What does Paramatma mean? The super soul. The same, and that is that is God in his individual, like how he sits next to you in, let's say, in, let's say, like in King Solomon's um, temples, it's known as the all seeing eye. Yeah. Right. This is the part, this Paramatma feature is where your karma gets calculated, where basically your experiences are, are developed because Paramatma sits as neutral total neutral and just doesn't judge, but just simply, just simply, this is the idea of judgment hands out your karma and is witnessing your desire. Your desire is coming and springing from your heart. It's your heart's desire, not your mental desire. What we mentally desire, but what we truly desire is often two different things, but the mantras helps us get clear on what is the soul's desires. And then after Paramatma, we realize or come to God consciousness, which is recognizing the living spirit. Jesus Christ called, said, my father is the living spirit, the father of all. The, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the I am the living seed. You see, they're saying the same thing, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the principle is the same, is that there is a living spiritual father. And we are emanating from him. And our job is to ultimately connect back with him. And the way to do it in this age is through sound vibration by changing and shifting who we are. The war is this. The powers to be on the planet want to keep your vibration not in your spiritual body. They want to keep you in the material body because in the material body, you have material consciousness and therefore you, you, you work more, you spend more, you consume more because you're always trying to fulfill the bodily needs. You yeah. want to at least at bare minimum, reduce the bodily needs, you know, pick, pick one or two <laughs> and just go with those, but don't try to fulfill them all. And with the spiritual practice, you eventually get up to, 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 to being, you know, you recognize nature has given you everything you need. Yeah. Like, what is it that you mainly work for? We mainly work for money. And what is it that we mainly spend our money on? How much money do we really make? The average person, you know, the average person makes enough money to pay the mortgage or the rent, eat uh, some food. And depending how good we are on our money, we have a little bit of extra experience. Like we some fun, some restaurant time, some this, some that, whatever it is. Or, you know, or, or, you know, if we have some, some vices, we generally spend our money there. That is the, the reality for the, for 95% of the planet. Did you know that food is free and it comes from the earth? It does. Did you know that shelter is your human right? And you can learn to build a house, pick a plot of land. Chop down the trees. Did you know that people have lived like that for thousands and thousands of years and they weren't destitute and they weren't in the some, you, they were healthy, happy, connected with nature. So myself and my wife, we are moving more and more to that lifestyle where we are looking to grow our own food, provide our own shelter. Energy is free. There's another big bill. The big bill that shows up is your energy bill, especially wintertime. I live in Canada <laughs> in a hundred year plus old building. Cold. It is freezing in here. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. I think I've taken up. I think I've tangent your whole show. I apologize. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's that's absolutely fine because it's in it, you know it's interesting to hear various um, perspectives mm. um, about things and you know with with the um, the mantras and the and the sound if if you think about it there's so many more people now doing sound baths gonging um, light language y- you know all all, of, um, all that kind of thing and it's and it's it's gained in popularity. There's a lot more people oh, yeah. that are doing it, and it's and it's a and it's and it's become really popular. So on a subconscious level, people are actually connecting to, okay, I need to be using sound now. Yes, yes, it is the practice. It, it that's why every religion, in major religion in the world, and then it, and then it it kind of like offshoots into the millions of forms of spirituality that's available, right? It it's that, it's that. Uh, Every religion practice, even Jesus said, you know, hallowed be thy name, right? He gave us a prayer. He didn't say sit in silence. He never says sit in silence, right? Even the Buddhists, they use the mantras. They chant different mantras to evoke different qualities. Uh, um, Christians chant on the rosary, right? They, they, that's yeah. their form of chanting, the prayers, right? Uh, the, the Our Father and the Hail Mary. And again, Jesus himself said, hallowed be thy name. It's in his name. All of them to give the power of the name, the power of Allah. In the Muslim tradition, they chant the nine qualities of Allah. In uh, the Vedics, there's mantras to evoke the demigods, Shiva, Ganesh, Lakshmi, Sarasvati. All of these are demigods. These are all in the, in the, in the Vedic cosmology. Uh, the king of the the king of the castle is Krishna and Vishnu, and they're the same. There's no difference between Krishna and Vishnu, and and then all the rest are emanations. So Shiva is so they give all the qualities of God, and Shiva is like two qualities shy. So he is like he's like the topmost, right? And so they compare it to a candle. There's a every can once a candle is lit. It has all the qualities of the original candle. The original candle is what we, we call God or the source. And everything else is an emanation or an expansion of that original candle. But the candles, all the candles carry light and heat. And right, they're all possess the same qualities because the seed always possesses all the qualities. Yeah. So all good qualities essentially come from God or what we call Krishna. Now, why, why the name Krishna specifically we use? Because Krishna means the all-attractive. Krishna means the all-attractive personality, that God has a personality and he is full of six opulences. Now, it goes into way more detail, but the basic six are God is all wealthy, all famous, all powerful, all knowledgeable, all renounced and all beauty. And if you look at these six qualities, these are the qualities we're attracted to. Yeah. People want fame. People want wealth. People want, people want, um, you know, a, a, a beauty, right? People want to be renounced and detached. People want, right? Intelligence. We build big, big universities and all these things, right? All these qualities is the whole basis. So yeah. God is the sum total of all those qualities. And we are all attracted to God because we're all attracted to his qualities. Material consciousness means I forgot that he's the source of those qualities, that what I'm really attracted to is the spiritual quality as opposed to the material manifestation or covering. In our material consciousness, we get attracted to the bright, shiny light of the material covering. But in our in our spiritual consciousness, we understand the spiritual essence, which is emanating out just pure love, just pure, pure. And love is not human love. This is not like love between man and a woman. It's called a uh, prima, unconditional love. It's something that if we can ever, you know, maybe a mother to their child is the best yeah. probably equivalent to that. Maybe a mother knows that love more than anybody else right yeah you know maybe i say maybe because mothers were you know full of selfishness too right like you know and and the reality is we're all full of selfishness 
Like I'm not sitting here saying that because I'm some pure being. Trust me, not happening. <laughs> I'm on that slow path, you know. <laughs> I'm on that slow walk, you know. One at a time. I'm yeah. I'm totally on that one step at a time path. But the point is, get on the path, right? Get on the path, and and mantras and sound is the path. And as you said, all of these different practices, uh, they're all using sound vibration. So every major religion uses sound vibration. Um, you can evoke sound. You can use sound. So what got me on that tangent was the demigods. So let's say you want money specifically, right? Then, you know, you chant and you start to worship uh, uh, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. And Lakshmi brings fortune because it's a certain vibration. You have to really master that vibration. The reason it doesn't work for most people is because they don't realize how precise it is. Like you have to really learn that mantra. Yeah. And it has to be done in the right spirit and mood and the set. Like it is a science. It's not just like, yeah, I got a Lakshmi poster on my wall. Where's the money coming in? Right. It's like yeah. it's it's a real vibrational shift. Um, but the Maha Mantra and and names that are associated with God, so Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, um, uh, Allah, Jehovah, Govinda, there's millions and millions of different names that are directly associated with God. Narayana is another one, right? Uh, these names come with full potency. So they, they're like watering the root. Yeah. So if I'm going to take care of a plant, uh, I don't get to go and water each leaf, right? <laughs> No, I'm just going to water the root and the root has the intelligence to distribute the water to where it's needed. Right. And, and will distribute it properly. So the idea is that you can go to all these different demigods sort of say, and use all these different mantras and you can do that and evoke different results. And that's fun and cool. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, right. You know, and there's a lot of mysticism there and depending what you're interested in, what your deal is. Um, or you could take up the God conscious route, which is like you just go to God, the source, and you you evoke and you you serve you you bring service to the source. Just like if I'm going to eat something, the the the, the position of the hand is that to pick up the food and put it in the mouth, right? Yeah. And then the and then the 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 the, the stomach has the intelligence to break that that energy down, that food down and distribute it throughout the body to where it's necessary. It, it, it makes it usable and it knows what it what it, your body needs. So the analogy is made that when you're chanting um, God conscious, when you're chanting with the intention of God consciousness and you're using prayer towards God, service directly intentionally towards God, uh, God accepts that in love. He accepts anything you give him in love. That's the secret. It's not what you're giving him. All the sacrifices, wave the sage, do this, do. It's to evoke an inner energy, an alchemization of love. Service, selfless love is what you're trying to get to. And, and, and God receives that. Draw an eye onto God and God will draw an eye onto you. He receives it perfectly as you give it. And then he reflects it back to you. So hence law of attraction and all these ways to describe this attraction or how you interact with the universe. And then you'll realize that you have an eternal relationship with God. You're always interacting with God or the universe or whatever you want to, whatever language floats your boat. It's the key is not to get caught up on the, the, the material word, but the vibration coming with the word. Yeah, that makes yeah, that makes absolutely uh, perfect sense, and and a, a brilliant way of actually explaining that that it's not the actual word, but it's the vibration that you use. Um, it's the, yeah, the word itself is like like for instance, when you say the word Krishna, um, Krishna is present in his word. So the word Krishna, for example, or Vishnu or Govinda, is God present to you through sound. We're still waiting for a guy on a cloud. And that's cool. I'm not saying he can't do that. God is unlimited. Like I will never limit God. And and his if he wants to show up on a cloud, he could show up on a cloud, right? He's the I ultimate think. mystic, right? Right, you know? Back for unicorn will be cool. 
That, there you go. Back of a unicorn. I mean, he could do he could do whatever he wants. He created massive universes. What's the deal of showing yeah. up on the back of a unicorn, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. This universal intelligence has created all this, and we often want to solve our problems with our intelligence, but surrender means to rely on a greater intelligence. So the whole idea here is that you're using sound vibration and prayer as a form of connecting with God. God receives what it is you're putting down. He picks up what you're putting down and he reciprocates that back perfectly to you as a form of love and mercy. So everything that's happening to you is a form of your, is a reflection back to you and is his mercy. Now, if you don't like what's reflecting back to you, don't blame God. You have to now go, where is my freak? God is simply reciprocating back your desire. He's so loving in that way. Now, what he wants all now, Here's now the pure devotees, Jesus Christ, Srila Prabhupada. Like you're talking about the, you know, what, those that we call avatars and like, you know, we they are beyond the human yeah. conception. They didn't want anything from God. They just wanted to sort of see they became God-like because they just became pure love. That's the ultimate spiritual goal. Yeah. It ain't easy. But... The problem, the good news is that you can attain it if you so desire. The worst case scenario that's going to happen to you by using mantras is that you're going to get your material desires. <laughs> that's, your, that's your worst case scenario. Yeah. Your, and if, and if yeah, that's your worst case scenario, what are you worried about? That's Well, that's exactly it. That's, that's your worst case scenario. Your best case scenario is, you know, you become a Christ, right? A Buddha. You become... You become, you know, uh, uh, a saint, essentially, right? Very difficult. But, you know, my Guru Maharaj, he's a saint. Bhakti Marj Swami, he doesn't consider himself a saint. Like, he'll probably doesn't even like that I just said that because, he, you know, he doesn't because he's so humble, right? Like, that's like a saint will never say, hey, I'm saintly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you how saintly I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Let me sit down for a second. Let me tell you how good I am, right? But uh, what makes him a saint, in my opinion, so just my perspective, is his spirit. His spirit is like he, you could feel that he doesn't want anything from you. Like just your friendship. Like that's all he wants. Just like, your, like you know, like let's hang out. Let's, you know. And so there's interesting in the Vedas, it says that there's. Okay. So what our first, let's say the first level of relationship is kind of passive. It's just like more like an awe. Whoa, this is cool. So we get to this stage where we're just like, almost like just absolutely in awe of the living spirit. Then we can have a relationship that of like, like a servant and master, Right. You know, a little bit like Christianity floats a little bit like this with the, it's like judge and juror. It's very like, you know, this. And that's one type of relationship. It's called a rasa, a relationship. So we can have this type of relationship. You can have a relationship like mother to son. Like you can take care of God. This is like really practiced in, in temples as deity worship. This type of relationship, you know, this also serve it like, it's the mood of the person, right? It's the yeah. mood of the individual soul. But, you know, you can take care of God. You can comfort God. You can feed God. You can, you're essentially building your relationship through this way. You can have, this is my particular rasa. This is my, is, is that of like in Krishna, in the stories of Krishna. So Krishna is God and the cowherd boys are his friends. So it's a friendship. So I, I approach God much like a friend, like almost like equal I know we're not equal, like, but I approached him like a friend, you know, like you would know, like, you know, like you approach a friend, they may be a, a black belt in Taekwondo and you're, and you're an orange belt, but outside the dojo, you're there, you're just friends, yeah. right? But you, but you get their superiority in technique, right? That's like the relationship of a friend. Like I get the superiority, but I like to approach God in my heart as a friend. That's where I'm at with God. So we have that type of relationship. And then, you know, then there's the ultimate relationship of like Jesus Christ and like, you know, all these great saints who, um, you know, they they just purely were like, like, like lovers. 
like conjugal lover being the highest like like it's not a it's not it's it's described it's described as a conjugal lover because sex attraction in the material world is the is the highest attraction it's the highest motivating force but in the spiritual planet in the spiritual world it's pure love so sex and love are the same thing expressed one is a material expression and one is a spiritual expression so jesus christ and Srila Prabhupada, all these all these great great souls these mahatmas these pure devotees of god were purely in trance they were purely in love with god and this is described as in the stories of Krishna is described as the most intimate relationship between him and the gopi girls where these gopi girls this is like you can see there's kid this was not like a sexual relationship but this is the story of him expands himself and dancing with all of these girls and they're they're kids so you can imagine the innocence and purity of this dance right and they do this and they're completely entranced it says that this is the highest taste. This is the highest rasa, pure love of God. Whew! I could only imagine one day, maybe. Oh, that's abs that's absolutely perfect. So thank you so so much for for sharing all your insights, and that. So as you know, um, I like to do um, I do guided meditations and uh, oracle cards, and each week I like to ask my guests whether what they would like for themselves and those watching. So, Nakula, would you like me to do um, an oracle card or would you like me to do a guided meditation? I'm going to go with the card. I find them so intriguing. Yeah, let's go with the cards. <laughs> I like cards. Yeah, I like cards too. Okay. So, as usual, I'll give them a cleanse and a bless. And, of course, when I do the cards, um, it's for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work uh, um, in past lives, when we clear the past, it's to be in the present. And when I take people into the future, it's so they know what their future is to bring them back to the present. So everything I do is for what we need to know in the present. So what does Nakula and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Wandering path. Enjoy the journey. Nice. I mean, what an absolutely perfect card to come out with what we've actually been talking about and confirmation. Um about that you know enjoy this journey that we're we're on at the moment that you're on at, at the moment take pleasure in it enjoy it and just, and just see what opens up in front of you yeah and that yeah. so that's absolutely perfect you know and that's not just for nakula but it's for all you watching as well just enjoy your life at the moment and see the beauty and the wonder even in the smallest things um that that uh, that you, that you have so yeah that's an absolutely brilliant card to uh to come out i just love the way the cards do that <laughs> it, yeah it's amazing like again when you're very in tune everything is speaking to you yeah everything is reflecting god is always reflecting perfectly back where you're at and uh the way that you can shift anything in your life is just to start to smile at it so you let's say you you want your bank account to be uh, uh, bigger. Smile at the bank account that you have, right? Realize that that you can you can um, you have to take action. You have to get knowledge. You have to right like, and then you know you start to learn what does it take if that's a, if that's something that you that you're in need of or want of. Uh, but the point is, it all starts. Nothing will happen. All of that means nothing unless you shift your relationship with whatever it is that you want to change. If you want to change something in your life, life is relationship. This process of mantras is called bhakti yoga, like Krishna consciousness and God consciousness. It's called bhakti yoga. Bhakti means devotion. Bring a sense of devotion, bring emotion to it, positive emotion, right? When you bring positive emotion to anything, you bring positive thoughts. These positive thoughts turn into positive ideas. What's a positive idea? It means it's it it's going to bring life 
It's going to, it's going to expand it. Oh, you know what? I could do this. I could do this. Like, and then you got to act upon those inspired positive thoughts and then let the results go. And as long as you can, and every day, if you live like that, where you give more than you ask for, you don't think, how am I going to get rich today? You think, how can I make this world a better place today? What can I do to help somebody today? That's a positive thought. And God will reflect that positivity back to you, right? It's always it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Your relationship with him is so precise. It is wild. Yeah. Well, brilliant insight to leave our viewers with. So as you've left that brilliant insight with us, is there a, a quick mantra or something that, 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 that could help us at this time that, the, you know, as someone watching this show um, could, could use? Yeah, well, I'll teach you the, the Hare Krishna mantra, the Maha mantra, the, the great mantra. So it's three words. It's pronounced Hari, Hari. Krishna, Krishna, and Rama. Rama. Hari, uh, we could say, uh, represents the energy or the feminine aspect of God. Krishna represents the male aspect or the energetic, the source of the energy. And Rama, we could say, means reservoir of pleasure. So when Hari and Krishna, when the male and feminine or Krishna and Radharani in the stories of Krishna are together, right? When, that, when there's a yoga united between these two, there's Rama, spiritual pleasure a reservoir of pleasure and this pleasure is the pleasure that that naturally our spiritual bodies are in but we are here in the material body which is full of you know aches and pains <laughs> right <laughs> so um uh so it goes like this hari krishna so you could uh, maybe you could say it after me i'll do two and you do two and then we do it right? yeah. so hari krishna hari krishna hari krishna Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Hari Rama. Hari Rama. Hari Rama. Hari Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. So it sounds like this. It's three words said 16 times in a, a pattern, uh, and it's 32 syllables. And you want to say each syllable. So it sounds like this. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama. Rama, Rama, Hari Hari. That's one mantra. And now you could do that. We do it on mantra beats. So I don't, I don't oh, I do. Two seconds. Okay, <laughs> Doug. It's right here. So on the beats. So we go around the beads and we do the Hare Krishna mantra. So we do Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then we would go to the next beat. And these malas have 108 beads. So you do it 108 times. It's roughly about, you know, depending on your pace, anywhere between six to 10 minutes per round. And you start with one round per day and then you continue to climb up. And, you know, when you start to get to, um, you know, even eight, nine, ten, one round a day. I mean, if you do one round a day consistently, it's a is a very solid uh, six to ten minute meditation using the sound vibration. And the key is to listen to yourself chanting every time your mind wanders, you bring your mind back. It's like a spiritual push up. You're getting stronger, stronger. You're learning to control the mind, bring the mind under control. And by doing that naturally you realize oh i'm not my mind because i'm controlling my mind i can't be that which i control so i must be that awareness or that intelligence behind the mind right and then there's different levels of realization that you will slowly go until you start to feel your actual spiritual body brilliant thank you so, so much that's that's absolutely amazing and i hope you know uh people watching this will actually start using um 
if not that mantra, other mantras to help raise their vibration. So everyone, I hope you found this um, insightful and you've enjoyed and you've enjoyed it. And the words of wisdom that Nakula has given you will help you further on your journey. So Nakula, if people want to uh, connect with you, how do they do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, best way is to go to my website, nakuladas.com. And all my social media is linked there. Um, there's a uh, there's a couple opt-ins you can choose. Uh, one specifically to do with mantra meditation and uh, and the Vedic knowledge, so you can opt in there. And sh there's a contact form, so you could send me a message directly. I always get tons of emails and messages from people all over the world um, looking for guidance uh, with their mantras, questions, uh, and anything that I can be of service. I'm just happy to connect. Brilliant. And I'll put the link in the comments so people can just click on that um, direct uh, uh, one, once the show, once they finish watching the show um, and they can go there. So everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this. And of course, if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call so we can find out more about each other and how I can be of service to you. And of course, the Angel Wings membership community is now open where you get a chance to grow with the angels, ascended masters, oracle cards, gods, goddesses, and of course, the community as well to spread your wings and soar. And of course, if you want to sign up to a weekly newsletter on my website, you get a guided relaxation meditation to help you de-stress. And there's some other th uh, little free gifts on there to help you um, move your life forward. So thank you so much for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are many more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, do subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of when the show next goes live. So I look forward to seeing you all in the same place, same time next week. And Akula, thank you so much. Thank you. And I will see you all soon. Bye.